and it's a story narrated by a young lady named Jemima. And it's called Orange. Third subject responses to investigators' written questionnaire, Eyes Only. One, Jemima Glorfindel Petula Ramsey. Two, 17 on June the 9th. Three, the last five years. Before that, we lived in Glasgow, Scotland. Before that, Cardiff, Wales. Four, I don't know. I think he's in magazine publishing now. He doesn't talk to us anymore. The divorce was pretty bad, and Mum wound up paying him a lot of money, which seems sort of wrong to me, but maybe it was worth it just to get shot at him. <laughs> Five, an inventor and entrepreneur. She invented the stuffed muffin, TM, <laughs> and started the stuffed muffin chain. I used to like them when I was a kid, but you can get kind of sick of stuffed muffins for every meal, especially because Mum used us as guinea pigs. <laughs> the complete turkey dinner Christmas stuffed muffin was the worst. <laughs> But she sold out her interest in the stuffed muffin chain about five years ago to start work on my mum's coloured bubbles. Not actually TM yet. <laughs> Six. Two. My sister Neris, who was just 15, and my brother Praderi, 12. Seven. Several times a day. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> No. <laughs> Nine. Through the internet, probably on eBay. <laughs> Ten. She's been buying colours and dyes from all over the world ever since she decided that the world was crying out for brightly coloured day glow bubbles. The kind you can blow with bubble mixture. Eleven. It's not really a laboratory. I mean, she calls it that, but really it's just the garage. <laughs> Only she took some of the stuffed muffins TM money and converted it <laughs> so it has sinks and bathtubs and bunks and burners and things and tiles on the walls and the floor to make it easier to clean. Twelve. I don't know. Neris used to be pretty normal. When she turned 13, she started reading these magazines and putting up pictures of these strange bimbo women up on her wall, like Britney Spears and so on. <laughs> Sorry if anyone reading this is a Britney fan. Smiley face. <laughs> but I just don't get it. The whole orange thing didn't start until last year. 13. Artificial tanning cruise. You couldn't go near her for hours after she put it on. And she'd never give it time to dry after she smeared it on her skin, so it would come off on her sheets and on the bridge door and in the shower, leaving smears of orange everywhere. Her friends would wear it too, but they never put it on like she did. I mean, she'd slather on the cream with no attempt to look even human-coloured. <laughs> she thought she looked great. She did the tanning salon thing once, but I don't think she liked it because she never went back. Forty. Tangerine girl. The Oompa Loompa, <laughs> Carrot Top, Go Mango, <laughs> Orangina. <laughs> Fifty. Not very well, but she didn't seem to care really. I mean, this is a girl who said that she couldn't see the point of science or math because she was going to be a pole dancer as soon as she left school. <laughs> I said, nobody's going to pay to see you and the all together. And she said, how do you know? I told her I saw the little quick time film she made of herself dancing nutty and left in the camera. <laughs> and said, give me that. And I told her I'd wipe them. But honestly, I don't think she was ever going to be the next Betty Page or whoever. <laughs> She's a sort of square shape for a start. <laughs> 16. German measles, mumps, and I think Pradary had chicken pox when he was staying in Melbourne with the grandparents. 17. In a small pot. <laughs> it looked a bit like a jam jar, I suppose. 18. I don't think so. Nothing that looked like a warning label anyway. <laughs> but there was a return address that came from abroad. 
and the return address was in some kind of foreign writing. 19. You have to understand that Mum had been buying colors and dyes from all over the world for five years. The thing with the day glow bubbles is not that someone can blow glowing colored bubbles, it's so they don't pop and leave splashes of dye all over everything. Mum says that will be a lawsuit waiting to happen. <laughs> so no. Twenty. There was some kind of shouting match between Neris and Mum to begin with, because Mum had come back from the shops and not bought anything from Neris's shopping list except the shampoo. Mum said she couldn't find the, shampoo, the tanning cream at the supermarket, but I think she just forgot. So Neris stormed off and slammed the door and went into her bedroom and played something that was probably Britney Spears really loudly. <laughs> I was up the back feeding the three cats, the chinchilla, and a guinea pig named Roland, who looks like a hairy cushion. <laughs> and I missed it all. 21, on the kitchen table. 22, when I found the empty jam jar in the back garden the next morning. It was underneath Neris's window. It didn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure it out. 23. Honestly, I couldn't be bothered. I figured it would just be more yelling, you know? And Mum would work it out soon enough. 24. Yes, it was stupid. But it wasn't uniquely stupid, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Which is to say it was par for the course for Neris. Stupid. <laughs> 25. That she was glowing. 26. <laughs> a sort of pulsating orange. <laughs> 27. When she started telling us that she was going to be worshipped like a god, as she was in the dawn times. <laughs> 28. Prideri said that she was floating about an inch above the ground. But I didn't actually see this. I thought he was just playing along, but then you found weirdness. <laughs> 29. She didn't answer to Neris anymore. She described herself mostly as either my imminence or the vehicle. <laughs> it is time to feed the vehicle. <laughs> Thirty, dark chocolate, which was weird because in the old days I was the only one in the house who even sort of liked it, but Prideri had to go out and buy her bars and bars of it. Thirty-one, no, Mum and me just thought it was more Neris, just a bit more imaginatively weirdo Neris than usual. <laughs> Thirty-two, that night when it started to get dark. You could see the orange pulsing under the door. <laughs> like a glow or, <laughs> or a light show. The weirdest thing was that I could still see it with my eyes closed. <laughs> 33. The next morning, all of us. 34. It was pretty obvious by this point. She didn't even look like Neris any longer. She looked sort of smudged like an after image. I thought about it and it's, okay, suppose you were staring at something really bright that was a blue color, then you closed your eyes and you'd see this glowing yellowy orange after image in your eyes. That was what she looked like. <laughs> 35. They didn't work either. 36. She let Prideri leave to get her more chocolate. Mum and I weren't allowed to leave the house anymore. 37. Mostly I just sat in the back garden and read a book. There wasn't very much else I could do. I started wearing dark glasses. So did Mum, because the orange light hurt our eyes. <laughs> Other than that, nothing. 38. Only when we tried to leave or call anybody. There was food in the house, though, and stuffed muffins to get in the freezer. <laughs> 39. If you just stopped her wearing that stupid crap tanning cream a year ago, we wouldn't be in this mess. But it was unfair, and I apologised afterwards. 
Fourteen. When Pradary came back with the dark chocolate bars, he said he'd gone up to a traffic warden and told him that his sister had turned into a giant orange glow and was controlling our minds. <laughs> He said the man was extremely rude to him. <laughs> 41. I don't have a boyfriend. I did, but we broke up after he went to a Rolling Stones concert with the evil bottle blonde former friend whose name I do not mention. <laughs> also, I mean, the Rolling Stones, these little old goat men hopping around the stage. <laughs> about having to put animals down and I don't know. I want to travel for a bit before I make any decisions. 43. The garden hose. We turned it on full while she was eating her chocolate bars and, <laughs> and, and we sprayed it at her. 44. Just orange steam. <laughs> Mum said if she had solvents, that she had solvents and things in the laboratory if we could get in there. But by now, her imminence was hissing mad, literally, and she sort of fixed us to the floor. I can't explain it. I mean, I wasn't stuck, but I couldn't leave or move my legs. I was just where she left me. 45. About half a metre above the carpet. She'd sink down a bit to go through doors, so she didn't bump her head. <laughs> And after the hose incident, she didn't go back to her room, just stayed in the main room and floated about grumpily, the colour of a luminous carrot. <laughs> 46. Complete world domination. <laughs> 47. I wrote it down on a piece of paper and gave it to Pradera. 48. He had to carry it back. I don't think her imminence really understood money. 49. I don't know. It was Mum's idea more than mine. I think she hoped that the solvent might remove the orange. And at that point, it couldn't hurt. Nothing could have made things worse. Fifty. It didn't even upset her like the hose water did. I'm pretty sure she liked it. I think I saw her dipping her chocolate bars into it before she ate them. Although I had to squint up my eyes to see anything where she was. It was all a sort of great orange glow. 51. That we were all going to die. <laughs> Mama told Pradary that if the great Oompa Loompa let him out to buy chocolate again, he just shouldn't bother coming back. And I was getting really upset about the animals. I hadn't fed the chinchilla or Roland the guinea pig for two days because I couldn't go into the back garden. I couldn't go anywhere except the loo, and then I had to ask. 52. I suppose because they thought the house was on fire. <laughs> All the orange light. I mean, it was a natural mistake. 53. We were glad she hadn't done that to us. <laughs> Mum said it proved that Neris was still in there somewhere because if she had the power to turn us into goo, like she did the firefighters, <laughs> she would have done. I said that maybe she just wasn't powerful enough to turn us into cure at the beginning and now she couldn't be bothered. <laughs> 54. You couldn't even see a person in there anymore. It was a bright orange pulsing light and sometimes it talked straight into your head. 55. When the spaceship landed. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was bigger than the whole block, but it didn't crush anything. It sort of materialized around us so that our whole house was inside it. And the whole street was inside it too. 57. <coughs> so, what else could it have been? 58. A sort of pale blue. They didn't pulse either. They twinkled. <laughs> 59. More than six less than 20. It's not that easy to tell if this is the same intelligent blue light you were just speaking to five minutes ago. <laughs> 60. Three things. 
First of all, a promise that Neris wouldn't be hurt or harmed. Second, that if they were ever able to return her to the way she was, they'd let us know and bring her back. Thirdly, a recipe for fluorescent bubble mixture. <laughs> I can only assume that they were reading Mum's mind because she didn't say anything. It's possible that her imminence told them, though. She definitely had access to some of the vehicle's memories. <laughs> also, they gave Pradari a thing like a glass skateboard. 61. A sort of liquid sound. Then everything became transparent. I was crying, and so was Mum, and Pradari said, Cool beans. <laughs> and I started to giggle while crying, and then it was just our house again. 62. We went out into the back garden and looked up. There was something blinking blue and orange, very high, getting smaller and smaller, and we watched it until it was out of sight. 63. Because I didn't want to. 64. I fed the remaining animals. Roland was in a state. The cats just seemed happy that someone was feeding them again. I don't know how the chinchilla got out. <laughs> 65. Sometimes. I mean, you have to bear in mind that she was the single most irritating person on the planet, even before the whole her imminence thing. <laughs> but yes, I guess so, if I'm honest. 66. Sitting outside at night, staring up at the sky, Wondering what she's doing now. 67. He wants his glass skateboard back. He says that it's his and the government has no right to keep it. <laughs> you are the government, aren't you? <laughs> Mum seems happy to share the patent for the coloured bubble recipe with the government. The man said that it might be the basis of a whole new branch of molecular something or other. Nobody gave me anything, so I don't have to worry. 68. Once, in the back garden, looking up at the night sky, I think it was only an orangish star, actually. It could have been Mars. I know they call it the Red Planet. Although once in a while, I think that maybe she's back to herself again and dancing up there, wherever she is. And all the aliens love her pole dancing because they just don't know any better. <laughs> And they think it's a whole new art form, and they don't even mind that she's sort of square. <laughs> 69. I don't know. Sitting in the back garden, talking to the cats maybe, or blowing silly coloured bubbles. 70. Until the day that I die. I attest that this is a true statement of events. Signed, David. <laughs> Thank you.